Welcome back friends, my name is Zephyr, and in today's video we're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy IX playthrough. So as always, jump right back into it. Hope you have a killer stream today, man. Yo, one heart, good morning my friend, and JP, good morning. How you both doing today? How you guys doing today? Hope you're having an awesome day, friends. Let's see. Alright. Good morning to everyone, man. What's going on with uh, the font here? Super teeny tiny, I say. Font. Aha, that's why. There we go. Normal size. I'm great. Had a good day. You? I'm doing pretty awesome. Just waking up. Having my coffee. Haven't had my first sip yet. Oh, just kind of waking up, man. It's good. The power is out at the house. Oh, man. Power's out? That's not good at all. I wonder why. Is it, like, really stormy there? Really rainy? Or just, like, a random power out? I'm happy you had a good day, though, JP. Did you do anything exciting today? Anything to make it a good day? Or just had a pretty chill day? Man, having those just... Having a good day nowadays is, feels like it's getting harder and harder to find, so I'm happy for you, my friend. Bright and sunny day. Yo, twin, good morning, my friend. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. I worked and then chilled with friends. Those are always phenomenal days, man. Those are always great days. The days where you don't got to do nothing. You can just hang out, chill, play some games, hang out with friends. Those are good days, man. Good morning, bro. I'm tired. Dude, I feel you, man. Cheers, I will I will take my first sip of coffee for you, man. Yo, Karen, good morning. How you doing? Oh man, it is 707 a.m. here. So nice bright early. I was gonna try so hard to get up earlier so I could do a little bit of like video editing for my uh my PS5 reaction. But man, I didn't get home last night from work till like 9:30. And I didn't get to bed till like 10.30, so I, my body was just not waking up. But after the stream, I'm going to do some video editing, so. Son is seven weeks old and is keeping me up all night. Oh, man. Again, just so congrats, man. That is super, super exciting. Not the staying up all night part, but having a seven-week-old, that is incredible, man. Seven weeks old. I live in Washington State. I live in Washington State. Good old West Side. <laughs> yes, the heart flexes. I love it. Man. Ugh. What about you all? Do you all live? Carrie, and I know you said you live in... Uh, uh, I think you said you live in Malaysia, right? I think it was Malaysia. What about you, JP? New Mexico. Ooh, New Mexico's beautiful. I used to live in uh, southern Utah, so... Yeah, I've been to New Mexico a couple times. Very beautiful there. I feel like just every state is so gorgeous. Every Everywhere is gorgeous in its own way, you know? Got that, like, desert vibe. Up here in Washington, it's, like, foresty all the time. I love it here. The food is great. Oh, man. Good food just makes everything better. Oh, I already read this yesterday. I wonder why it's... Hmm. Making me read it again. I have a favor to ask, Koopo. Deliver a letter. Thanks, Koopo. You have to be in a state I don't enjoy in some way. Man. Yeah, every state is, is like, incredibly beautiful. And every state just has, like, so much history behind it. So it's, like... I mean, even though there would probably be some states I'd prefer to live in than others for, you know, educational reasons or all sorts of different reasons, each state, in terms of, like, beauty, is just incredibly gorgeous. Man. I would, I would love to just, you know, have a house in like four different states, five different states, and just shuffle time throughout the year between them. That would just be awesome. Maybe one day. Finish it off. Should I crush its head? How about its chest? Stop it. He's a living creature. What did you say? Ron programmed them to kill, but they're still just like anybody else. Lies. They may look human, but that's where the similarities end. They destroy everything, like wrecking balls destroy buildings. They don't even know we're made of flesh and blood. 
Mm, are you playing any games, twin? I'll be lurking, K, bro. All right, man. All right. What about you? Have a fun stream. Thank you so much, man. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure seeing everybody. Are you going to resist us? Yes, to the death. Oh, really? I admire your courage. Armed with the Black Mage Army and the Eidolons, Queen Brawn is invincible. Resistance will only bring death. Well, what about you, JP? Or Carrion? Or One Heart? What are y'all playing? I know, One Heart, you're enjoying Trials, right? Trials of Mana? Where are we going here? I'll be playing ooh, Left 4 Dead soon. Man, I... I I'm so excited for The Last of Us Part 2 that I just want to jump into, like, the horror genre. I might have... I might have pre-ordered The Last of Us Part 2 yesterday. <laughs> I'm incredibly excited. I'm so... I'm so back and forth if I want to stream it, like, day one, like, right when it comes out, or if I should wait. Because I feel like everybody and their mom is going to be streaming it, you know? I'm playing remake about to finish hard mode so wondering what i should play next Ooh, have you done pride and joy have you beaten pride and joy hmm someone there black mage just blinded me what a terrible loss i won't even see my newborn grandchild's face again thinking of life is strange or uncharted 2 oh man uncharted games are just incredible i was talking to my wife last night about that just how i was thinking of like games this generation that just have completely blown me away and there's been a lot but uncharted uncharted 4 was absolutely incredible uncharted 2 2 and 4 are probably my my favorites i'm missing episode 18 and pride and joy i still haven't beat i i haven't even gotten that far yet in hard mode i think i ended my hard mode run like train graveyard and then the next day i started final fantasy 8 so oh man i want to jump back into remake so much it just feels like there's not enough time in the day, man. The industrial district is gone, and the business and theater districts are also in ruins. Allocate soldiers to the reconstruction. We must get the citizens' lives back on track. Yes, sir. Uncle Artania. Princess Garnett. Master Zidane. Glad to see you're both safe. Indeed. <laughs> oh, man. I do got... What are your... Um... What are your feelings so far, like, on Remake? I'm, I'm assuming if you're doing a hard mode and almost done with it, you're probably loving it, right? Man. Remake is awesome. Remake is just super, super cool. If anything, it just left me wanting so much more afterwards. By the way, thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it. I'm still a very beginner at streaming. Dude, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'm trying just so hard to just, you know, help everybody. Like helping as many people as I can. I appreciate each one of you immensely for the support continuously that you provide. So, you know, like I always say, if just make your lay just a little bit better. That's what it's all about, my friends. I wanted to play more when I finished, right? I wanted to play Red 13, man. I wanted to play Red 13. And it did suck too, because where it ended, you didn't really get a choice to like pick your party members. Like, I don't really think there's a single part in the game that I can recall with Remake where you have access to all four characters and you can, like, choose who you want, you know? The game pretty much picks your party for you every single chapter. Can't wait for Yuffie and Vincent. Oh, man. Same. Same. And Sid. I cannot wait for Sid. Man, I hope they just drag you knight the crap out of Sid. And Vincent, dude... I hope Vincent has some has like similar speed to Cloud, but with like the shooting of Barrett and Yuffie. I'm so excited for Yuffie, man. I'm so ex Yuffie is. I hope Yuffie is going to be as fast as Tifa with like a long range weapon. Man, what they could do is so exciting. The limit break oh, for Vincent. I just it, I only hope for the limit breaks that we can control it. That's the most annoying thing about Vincent for me in the original was the limit breaks because they were cool. But you can't control him at all, which sucks. I'm not super crazy about that. Where is Uncle Sid? Is the region safe? Yes, princess. The castle was spared. Regent Sid is alive. Thank goodness. I will take you to see him. I honestly even wish there was more limit breaks in Remake. 
Like, I feel like each character just got two each. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just left, was left wanting so much more in Remake, you know? But the story's not over. I guess I, I just always think of it like Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, you know? Like, where it ends, that's not supposed to be the end of it. There's supposed to be more. Garnett, I thought Bronn had imprisoned you. Zidane rescued me. Thank you, Zidane. Guac. Every time he says that, I think of guacamole. But Freya, Steiner, and Beatrix were left behind. I... Ah, the renowned General Beatrix. I don't think you have anything to worry about. I don't think so either, Dagger. We wound up in Pinnacle Rocks instead of Trino, but they'll be fine on their own. Guac, guac. Guacamole. Yo, Porter, how, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. How goes the FF9 goodness? Oh, it's going, man. Think about halfway. I don't even. I don't even think halfway. Probably like a third of the way through, but just kind of grinding through it, man. Having some good convos with good people. How have you been, buddy? Good to see you again, man. Oh man, I'm just trying to like wake up. Ooh. Do you ever have those? Do you ever have those days where you're drinking coffee, drinking coffee or whatever? Just doesn't seem like the caffeine's hitting you enough man just like need more caffeine like five hour those five hour shots whatever oh porto so we were having this conversation the other day i do gotta ask <laughs> do you put milk in your tea that was a conversation we were having a few days ago and it seems like everybody so many people put milk in their tea but i had never heard of that before i never knew that was a thing but i tried it a few days <laughs> power is back <laughs> Doing well, my dude, and yes, I have those days. Man. Oh, Saturday 13th is a good day. I went through it. Depends on the type of tea, isn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah, I think, what what did I make? I had, it was Earl Grey black tea. And then I put just a little bit of milk in there, just like a splash. I had never tried it before, but it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I don't think my wife was convinced. She'll still probably drink it straight. But it wasn't too bad, man. Depends on the tea. It's a British thing. It was pretty good, man. It was... It kind of reminded me of coffee a little bit. Like the, the texture of it with it. It wasn't bad. The, what was the other one? Jaffa Cakes. Do you like Jaffa Cakes? On my day off, my wife and I are going to go to this uh, world market with like different snacks from around the world. We're going to try to find Jaffa Cakes. Everyone says they're amazing. Guac, guac. Pinnacle? Did you ride the Gargant? How did you know? It's my job to know the land surrounding my country. It is. However, I sometimes lack foresight. Ron was after the guac idolins. That much I knew. When I visited the UK, I got stuck into the chaffas. <laughs> Man, a lot of people were saying they're delicious. They look, they look pretty good. They look kind of like a... Uh, like cookies, right? They look pretty yummy, though, honestly. Man. Oh, yeah, we had a, like, a whole two-hour conversation a couple days ago about just, like, different foods and different snacks and stuff from around the world. And, oh, it was so fascinating. Super, super. I'd, like, never heard of Jaffa Cakes before. But, man, people just, like, seem to love them. Ne I never knew milk and tea was a thing. But it seems like that's... a pretty big thing what else like what else is a what else is a very oh crumpets crumpets man yo goofy how you doing man good to see you buddy how's your day going dude yeah crumpets uh my, my buddy rudo sent me a photo of crumpets they kind of look like muffins like like i don't want to say english muffins but kind of like muffins you know jaffa cakes are the one <laughs> crumpets are the ish Oh, man. They don't... Oh, they don't look like muffins. <laughs> How you doing, Rudo? I don't know, man. That, that photo you sent me on Twitter, they, they kind of looked a little a little muffin-y to me. I mean, they look delicious. At least the muffins I'm thinking. Like, English muffins. At least here in the States, they're, they're called English muffins, so... 
Good, thank you. Waiting for my emotes to finish pending. Oh, man, that's exciting, dude. That's super exciting. What are you doing? What are your emotes going to be? How many are you doing? Are you doing the, the three to start? Tier one, tier two, tier three? Ron was after the guac. Idolins. That much I knew. But I underestimated the power of the Idolins. Maybe I deserve to be cursed with this body. I'm glad you surrendered. Clara resisted and perished. What should I say? What can I do? Hey, we got a live one here. Watch out, it might attack. Hey, this one's much smaller than the others. Ouch, let me go, I'm not one of them. Why are you dressed like a black mage? That must be Vivi. Man, I have a laughing one and a rip one. <laughs> those are probably, those are pretty good ones then. I can't wait to see them, man. Dude, the emotes are so fun. All right, so just got two at the moment. Got my Phoenix down, sub badge two. Ooh, that's exciting, man. Did you just get like a PNG file of the of a Phoenix down feather? Honestly, the PNG files, I don't even know that, how to describe them, but whatever the, the look of the items are in Final Fantasy IX look awesome. I would love to get like PNG files of them. Like they're super colorful little potion bottles. The Phoenix down feather looks really cool. It's pretty cool looking items in Final Fantasy IX. So, I do got a question for all of you. I'm kind of torn. So, I just I just pre-ordered The Last of Us Part Two yesterday. I got the Deluxe Edition. And I can't even put into words how excited I am for it. I'm just, I'm wondering if y'all would be interested in me streaming it. Do you think I should stream it, like, the day it launches? Because I'm almost wondering if... Man, because I'm so excited for The Last of Us Part 2. It looks so good. I really, 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 really want to play it. I did want to play Final Fantasy like 13 or 15 after this, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are going to be streaming it, right? What are your all thoughts on that? I can't watch it. <laughs> I want to play too. I feel like a lot of people are either going to be playing it or watching it. So I'm almost wondering if I should like hold off on streaming it for couple months or maybe till kind of the hype dies down and there's like less people streaming i probably won't play because i'm not a big on linear gameplay i'd watch it though man have you have you seen the first one goofy dude the first one is just mind-blowingly good probably one of my favorite games of all time man it's so good and and man i've i haven't really seen any any reviews or like any spoilers or anything on the last of us part two but people are people are saying it's like like really intense like shockingly intense i'd have to play before i watch it so hopefully i can be ahead of you i mean at the rate i i mean ask rudo at the rate i go in video games <laughs> that's probably possible by the time you finish i'd probably just be on like chapter two yeah, it's a great story, don't get me wrong. It is. It is. I just love Naughty Dog games. I just prefer, prefer my open worlders. Do you think you'd consider Final Fantasy... Because you just played Final Fantasy VIII, and you're doing Final Fantasy XII. Would those be considered open world? I mean, definitely Final Fantasy XII. That one's definitely more so open world. But I mean, eight is pretty linear, you know? First one was great, in my opinion. Are you going to play Last of Us Part 2, Porto? Are any, have any of you pre-ordered it? Have any of you bought it? Are any of you, like, getting it day one? JP, it sounds like you are, right? Man, I... I yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I saw, like, gameplay footage yesterday on my lunch break at work for, like, two minutes. And when I was watching it, I was just like, dude, I know I'm going to buy this eventually. I just got to do it. And I did it. <laughs> I haven't pre-ordered, but I'm considering. True, but I still think there's a lot of openness in it. There is. There is for sure. You know? I don't know if... I feel like I've asked you before, Goofy, but have you played Final Fantasy VII Remake at all? The remake one? Because Remake... Only have a Switch, so... <laughs> guess I'm watching. Dude. Switch is... Switch is such, Switch is like one of my favorite consoles of all time. 
And I mean, Switch has Breath of the Wild, so I'll always have to have a Switch just because of Breath of the Wild. I'm tempted to stream Days Gone. I've never heard of Days Gone. I don't know if I've ever heard of Days Gone. The only reason I was asking on Remake, because Remake felt like an incredibly linear game. Like, it almost felt like, like Final Fantasy X levels of linearity, but maybe even more. Like, Final Fantasy VII Remake was so much of, like, a chapter-based storytelling experience than any kind of open world whatsoever. Not yet. When I'm back at work and earning more money, I'll buy it straight away and stream it. Dude, that'll be exciting, man. It is very, very linear. Big open world zombie apocalypse. Ooh. That sounds pretty that sounds pretty cool man i feel like the only horror game i've ever played is probably the last of us so man i'm excited i i can't even put into words how excited i am for part two oof really oh on, on remake it, yeah i mean anyone you know jp you've played remake right yeah i like it's it's pretty it's very like final fantasy 10 types of linearity but even more so like you can't backtrack like it's yeah the linearity is pretty damn intense in, in 7 remake i mean it's great like i love linear games and i love open world games and i was talking to my wife about that last night and she was like saying how amazing breath of the wild is because of how open it is which i agree i love i love that about it but how she's like some of the games you play are so linear and so focused and so straight and like you can't really explore much and i'm like that's true i don't think that's a bad thing i just think it's like a different type of game you know but if you really love open world i could totally see how how it would be a pain in the butt i'll see how it goes i don't mind some linear games i do love pokemon the storytelling is good so i'm okay with that i totally agree i wonder i don't even think they could make it as linear as it is um, with the storytelling, you know, like it's a, like, it's so, it feels like a book. It, it feels so much like a book in the sense that there's chapters and when you're done with a chapter, you like transition to the next one. It's very old school kind of video game in a way, you know, we took an Alexandrian soldier into custody. I just said, should we turn it over to Alexandria? Uncle Sid, let him go. Master Vivi is not an Alexandrian soldier only a disguise to deceive the enemy I, I see my apologies apologies but yeah as soon as you get a chance to play goofy i i bet you'll love it it's great i've acquired more information about queen brawn guac a weapons dealer named a weapons dealer that's what kuja's going by like it's been so long since i've played nine like a lot of the story beats about kuja kuja specifically is probably the one part of final fantasy nine that i just feel hazy on fuzzy on the, the linear thing is why i don't like final fantasy 13 yeah yeah i was watching a really interesting video a couple days ago about the difference between 13 and 10 and it was really interesting to watch just how linear both of those games are but how different at the same time both of them are like it seems like in 13 they were talking about how it's literally just hallways of enemies and then just a treasure chest kind of tucked over in a corner with enemies guarding it like it's a lot of that whereas in 10 it's still very linear but you have like blitzball to do side quests for you have albed primers you have treasure chests you have the butterflies you have the lightning bolts you it's like every area has multiple things that you can do to kind of get away from the linearity aspect of 10 whereas 13 doesn't seem to have much of that at all it seems like it's just straight linear hallway with some enemies and then like a treasure chest behind more enemies but i haven't fully beaten 13 so i'm reserving judgment i'm i'm intrigued 13 is awful both have their place. Open world games can be overwhelming and demanding at times, but the freedom is glorious. Conversely, there is something great about letting go and allowing a linear game to take you on a ride. Dude, beautifully said, Porto. I could not agree more, man. That's something, honestly, when my wife was telling me for so long to play Breath of the Wild, like, she was, like, 
kind of nagging me, nagging me for months to play Breath of the Wild. And I was just like, dude, this game is so freaking huge. Like, I'm going to have to be so invested in it and just, like, hyper-focused on it. And, like, I, I couldn't just turn the Switch on and start Breath of the Wild out of nowhere. I had to be, like, like ready to dive into it. And when the moment came and I was ready to dive into it, it was one of the greatest games I've ever played in my entire life. Like, it's, it's probably, like, Breath of the Wild is probably, like, a top five, maybe even top three favorite game I've ever played in my life. 13 is so convoluted, I felt I had to study to understand what's going on. Yeah, it's all up to opinion, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think, I think there's, it's good to have opinions, you know, and it's good to, to acknowledge pros and cons in both. So I totally agree, but I do under I totally do understand JP. Like when I was watching the video and he was talking about the Falsy and the Lussy and the all sorts of stuff. Like when just showing clips of Thirteen and characters talking, I like had no idea what they were talking about. I'm like, these terms are just going straight over my head, cocoon and like. I don't know. It's almost like they're speaking in like a half different language so much. So with some of these terminologies, I don't know. And it's like the NPCs around don't give much storytelling. So you really just have to resort to uh, what is it? The the dialogue boxes or whatever inside the menu, the, the extra stuff inside the menu. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Weapons dealer named Kuja is behind the recent string of attacks. Kuja has been supplying Braun with highly advanced magic weapons. Supplying my mother with weapons? Yes. The Black Mage soldiers are among these weapons. According to eyewitnesses in Trino, Kuja appeared from the northern sky on a silver dragon. That's the guy I saw in Bermesia. I do like the lore oh, of Final Fantasy XIII. I just think it was poorly executed. I could see that. Like, honestly, and with all the terms, la see, foul see, all of that stuff, I guess if they just maybe, I don't know, just gave more, I don't know. Like, just kind of told the story better. And again, have not fully played it. I've only played like 10 to 15 hours, but I just remember the whole time I played it, I was like, I have no idea what is going on and I'm legitimately paying attention so I think the story was just poorly executed I totally agree man I totally agree but maybe I'll play it a second time like actually go through it and play it and maybe it'll be phenomenal so also XO so compared also XO compared like comparing uh 10 like comparing 10 to 13. Oh, sorry, my keyboard. Dude, my keyboard was like tripping up yesterday. Seriously thought my keyboard was like tripping on LSD or something. <laughs> I like went to, uh, I think I went to give one heart their VIP yesterday and just my whole keyboard was like spazzing out. So <laughs> I feel you, man. Came from the North, suggests that he is from the outer continent. The outer continent? There are many unexplored continents in the world. The Outer Continent is an unexplored continent located to the north of our missed continent. Holy crap. Take a shot every time. Take a shot every time we say continent. I mean, I'm trying to stream every Final Fantasy at some point, so I'll go back to it eventually. Same. Same, man. And you know, it's like... I want to play... Fi yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I'm the same way. I want to play Final Fantasy X. I want to play 12. I want to play 13. I want to play 14 and 15. I want to play them all. But like... Oh man, there's like so many other games I want to play. And I love Final Fantasy, man. But like, dude, I want to play Bloodborne. Fuck, freaking Rudo has got me so convinced I'm missing out by not playing Bloodborne. I want to stream Final Fantasy VI. The only one I'm missing, dude. Final Fantasy VI is so freaking good. Final Fantasy VI might be my absolute favorite 2D game ever made. And that is incredibly difficult to say over stuff like Super Mario World and Chrono Trigger. But man, Final Fantasy VI is just absolutely incredible. You need to play 14. I know, man. I know I need to play 14. Oh, man. I just need to quit my job. 
I just need to quit my job. <laughs> quit my quit my whole life and just stream video games, man. Uh or we just need a stretch timeout. I need like 36 hours in the day. Comparing Remake to 13, Remake felt like Midgar was a real place where people live while most of 13 felt like a massive dungeon. Don't we all? Very true, JP. Very true, man. Don't we all? Man, get on it. Odin server, hit me up. Dude, when I do, if I'm going to do 14, I just don't even know how I'd have time to play 14, man. Like, I feel like 14, with those MMOs, you gotta, like, you know, dig in. Ex it's kind of like, like, open world games. Like, you gotta, like, dig into them and... Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I really do want to play 14 one day. I just want to play so many other games, too, man. Have you played Bloodborne at all, Goofy? Or JP? Man. Or Porto, have you played Bloodborne at all? Man, my buddy Rudo is just, like... He has convinced me that is a game I, like, have to play. Bloodborne, yeah. Yeah, dude, it looks... My wife and I watched, like, a trailer and a couple gameplay videos of it last night. Dude, <laughs> it looks so cool. Excellent, you have to. Bloodborne is the truth. Yeah, I don't think I've heard one single person... I do not think I've heard one single person say they do not like Bloodborne. Nah, you haven't played a Goofy? Oh, man. I wonder if people enjoy Bloodborne because of, like, the game and everything, or they enjoy the difficulty and the rage of it. Probably both. Probably both. I don't, I don't know if I've ever played a game that difficult. I just wonder how... I just hope it's not going to, like, kick my ass 10 billion times. Ugh, it probably will, though. Dark Souls I have. What do you think about Dark Souls? It's different from Final Fantasy for sure. It looks a lot different. This game is so colorful and pretty and loves Zidane and Garnett and summons and pretty, pretty, pretty. And then we're going into like, you know, <laughs> whatever you call Bloodborne's world. It's faster paced than Dark Souls. It was my first Soul game and I was like, what? 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 Why do I die? <laughs> Why do I keep dying? I like games like that because I feel such a sense of accomplishment when I finish a boss. Same, man. Like, when you just, like, bulldoze over the bosses, it's it's kind of a pain in the ass. Like, when I played Final Fantasy VII, that was the first game I streamed a couple months ago. And I did a no materia challenge. Did not use any materia whatsoever. Did not use any magic, any summons, any anything. Just pretty much physical attacks and items. And it was still a cakewalk. Like, I died a couple times, but, like... Yeah, Final Fantasy VII is kind of stupid easy. It needs, like, a ha harder difficulty for sure. So having a game that's really difficult and really put you through your paces, it'd be fun to experience. My favorite part was summoning random players that can help you. That, I'm, I'm so curious about how that works. I like it, but I'm bad at it. I like games like that. Yeah, the accomplishment. Faster paced than Dark Souls. It seems like Dark Souls is more parrying and and yeah slower paced whereas bloodborne bloodborne's like a lot faster right no materia nope that was the first stream i ever did first stream i ever did late march a little bit into april didn't use any materia whatsoever no materia challenge but honestly like i mean i didn't do ruby weapon or emerald emerald weapon but i did pretty much everything else and it was was it hard it really wasn't it really wasn't at all um, it's kind of like when you go to Wutai and like Yuffie takes all your materials pretty much like that the entire game and Sorry, we're I'm spending so much time on this But like one cool thing I got out of it was I tried weapons. I had never tried before Because in the original game once you get once I would get the the double materia growth and the triple materia growth weapons That was the only weapons I would use Whereas with no materia. I didn't have to worry about leveling up materia so I would try like all the new weapons, I'd try the nail bad, I'd try, you know, weapons with like stronger attack, try uh, just like different combinations of stuff. And I tried items I had never used before, so it was definitely different, but it was fun. I doubt Emerald would happen or Ruby are possible with no materia. I don't know, man. I don't know. There are some insane, insane strategies out there, so... 
I'm sure a couple hero drinks. I'm sure a couple hero drinks could probably do it. I believe Kuj is the only one supplying guac. Brawn with weapons. Guacamole brawn. Man. Take a shot each time. Take a shot each time he says guac. Oh, man. The man I saw at the castle must have been Kuja. He must be the one who's corrupting my mother. If we defeat Kuja... Oh, they're thinking alike. You both catch on quickly. Defeat Kuja, and Braun loses her weapon supply. That will be our cue for a counterattack. Challenging Braun now will only result in more casualties. So we crush the source of the evil. Yes. Kuja will find other clients even if we defeat Braun. I make no excuses for my mother's behavior, but I shan't. Shan't. Is that... Shan't? What is that a conjugation of? Should not? But I shall not. Shall not. I shall not. Shan't. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever heard that conjugation before, but I shan't forgive Kuja for taking advantage of her. But first, we must rescue Steiner and the others. Afraid I can't spare any soldiers. They must remain to protect our citizens. Hey, Dagger, I'm telling you, they'll be fine. Best Dragon Knight of Bermesia, the female general of... Just... Why the female general, Zidane? Hmm? How about just the general of Alexandria? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Beatrix is more than just the female general of Alexandria. She's like the badassest... Swords person in the swords person in the entire world. You can be better, Zidane. How could they lose? Besides, you have me to protect you. Then I'll look for Kuja. I want to go too. There's no place for me here. All right, let's go kick Kuja's butt. Will you lend us the fastest airship in Lindblom? Airships can only fly where there's mist, and the mist only exists on this continent. Walk. That means you can't cross the ocean on an airship. What about the new airship that can fly without mist? It's not ready yet, guac. Besides, it's under Braun's control. Braun gave us two conditions for our surrender. One was the surrender of the new airship. The other was to hand over guac, the falcon claw. The airship I can understand, but what does she want with a piece of stone? I have no idea. All right, we'll take a boat. That's not an option either. The harbor was also seized. Ah, what do you want us to do? Swim? There is a way. There's an old excavation site near a swamp located north from the castle. Monsters not native to our continent are rumored to appear in the excavation site. The cave, which was found during excavation, is rumored to lead to another continent. Will this cave lead us to the outer continent? Doesn't sound too reliable. Are you sure? Guac. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. Not knowing is half of the fun, huh? Please protect Princess Garnett. We'll prepare the counterattack in the meantime. It's not much, but use it to prepare for your journey. Oh, a little bit extra money. Nice. I'll wait here, Zidane. I'll wait here. Zidane, will you get my stuff too? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Listen, Lindblom is Alexandrian territory now. You won't be able to come back for a while. Prepare yourself well. Let me know when you're ready. Ooh, shopping time. Find a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, can we buy more cotton robes? Hmm. Yo, there's a cool little, uh, Vivi. Dude, Vivi. My favorite Final Fantasy character, man. What about you, Goofy? I don't know if I've ever asked you. Do you have, like, a favorite Final Fantasy character? Jermina's boots. I think Queen is wearing my other pair of Jermina's boots. Vivi is absolutely, hands down, one of my favorite characters. There's so many just good... This is such a character-focused video game, and I love it. I think Vivi is just absolutely phenomenal. Hmm... Needle fork, eh? What else? What else do we need? Jermina's boots. Mm, silk robe, a bandana. 
and his village when you arrive in the Black Mage Village. Yes. Man, just, just his uncovering. Balthier, of course. <laughs> nice. Balthier is awesome. Balthier is easily my favorite part of uh, Final Fantasy XII. Yeah, man. Just Vivi. Yeah. Just the way he kind of undis discovers himself. The way he discovers... Just how others are created around him. How long they have to live. It's it's so heartbreaking. Vivi's a close second. Vivi's great. You know. I mean, I would even put Steiner really high up there. Steiner's development from beginning to end is, is great. Um... Zidane, I mean, I like Zidane a lot, but I don't think Zidane's the most interesting character in the story. I mean, Garnett is, Garnett has a lot of character development. I don't think Freya does too much, though. I wish there was more development for Freya. Amaranth also, also is an odd one. I'm not super crazy about Amaranth very much. Eco's pretty interesting. But yeah, Vivi, Steiner, Garnett are like three of my favorite Final Fantasy characters of all time. Especially Vivi. Sorry, my shop got destroyed and I don't have much to sell. Did Goofy, did your uh, does your um does your feather sub badge kind of look like this for your Phoenix down? I just love these these artwork for the for the items. I think they look great. The potion looks great. The Phoenix Down Feather looks great. These are just... I don't know why. Oh man, we've used so many potions. I had 99. One Heart wanted me to buy 99 of these. And I'm already down to 12. Maybe we can buy a couple. Auto Potion is very handy to have. raise the price because I don't want to sell them anything but I'll give you a major discount oh thank you buddy let's see not really next time you're in my stream I'll send a message in chat so you can see yo Steve good morning my friend how you doing buddy hope you all have an awesome day how's the stream going man it's going pretty solid got some awesome people always goofy and I were just kind of chatting about our favorite Final Fantasy characters and JP man Talking about Vivi. Have, I don't know if I've asked you, Stevo. Do you have a favorite Final Fantasy character? Man, I love... I just love Vivi. It's it's so much just... I always feel like character development and stories like a roller coaster, you know? If the roller coaster was just going straight the whole time, it's boring. But if it has ups and downs and circles and all over the place... It gets really interesting. And I feel like there's a lot of that with, like, Vivi, Garnett, Zidane. Out of all the... Yeah, out of all the games. Like, what is... What is your favorite character, man? I think I got everything here. I don't think I'm missing anything. Nice. I think... Ooh! I think Zidane is my favorite Final Fantasy protagonist. Not Balthier. Oof. <laughs> So why is Zidane? So why is Zidane then, Goofy? Him uncovering like who he really is? I like his extrovertedness. I like his flirtiness. It's very different compared to uh Wait, was that one? Artisan? Thought I missed it. That is a real tough one, man. I have favorite characters from each of the tiles, but I don't know who, who would be the goat. Hmm. Yeah, who's your favorite in uh who are the first few that kind of pop in your head? My favorite villain is Sephiroth for sure. I agree. I think Sephiroth is, is easily my favorite as well. Balthier isn't a protagonist. That's Vaughn, unfortunately. Vaughn is... Man, how does Final Fantasy XII have one of the best characters and one of the worst characters of all time? Like, when you got Balthier and Vaughn... Oh, man. I don't even know. Like, I would say twelve is... 12 is Ash's and Bosch's story more than anything, you know? I feel like Ash and Bosch should be the, the protagonist for 12. Like, it's about Ash reclaiming her kingdom. 
And it's about Bosch reclaiming his uh, his pride, his who he is, you know? And Balthier and Fran are just along for the ride and total badasses. I know, right? I need to replay 12. I can't remember anything. You think I should play the Zodiac Age? Zodiac Age is a ton of fun, man. And especially how you can customize like the job classes on it. I loved Zodiac Age. It definitely felt more restrictive than regular 12 because you can only choose two jobs versus like in the original you can pretty much everybody can learn everything and be everything so it's a little bit more restrictive in in zodiac age but it almost makes it more fun in my opinion so if you get a chance to play it i would highly recommend it want to know something interesting oh absolutely man i'm always down for something interesting I wonder if he'd give me a discount when I was a kid, Squall was my favorite because I identified with him a lot growing up. I don't think I can choose now. You know, at first, when I did my first playthrough of 8, I, I didn't know if I really even liked Squall very much at all. I just, I was like, I mean, he's eh. But like second playthrough, he definitely grew on me a lot more. I do think Squall is a very interesting character. Hmm. Hmm. You know, he just has like... He has a lot of... I mean, I don't feel like 8 had a lot of character development for most of the characters, but I feel of the characters that did get development in 8. Squall, Laguna, Renoa, a little bit of Cypher, Idea. But yeah, Squall, Squall and Laguna are probably the two most, you know, explored characters in Final Fantasy 8, so... Good morning, Ice. How you doing, my friend? How's your day going, buddy? We're talking about our favorite Final Fantasy characters. What are your thoughts on that? Loudmouth. I haven't learned that one. All right. I think that's. I think we got a lot. So in twelve, Balthier and Fran were originally. Really, they were the original main two characters. This is where Balthier's little catchphrases of him being the leading man was born. The publishers wanted more relatable characters, thus Vaughn and Pinello were born. And somehow, somehow Vaughn and Pinello are like the two least relatable characters. I mean, I don't know. I guess they're kind of relatable in the sense like you're just an average person in an average town wanting something better. I mean, we all feel that way, you know? Just average people wanting something greater in life. So maybe that's... That's the relatableness they tried to get. They just, I feel like they could have done more character development with Vaughn and Pinello. My dad abandoned my family when I was a kid and my sister ran away from home when I was young. So I had the same kind of thing Squall had of pushing people away, not wanting to be close with people because afraid they would leave. Because that's some abandonment issues. I'm really sorry to hear that, Sivo. That's really, that is really an interesting connection though. It almost makes me wonder of like characters I thought I never liked. Like maybe other people, maybe like other people connect, like people connect to different characters for different reasons, you know? But I'm sorry, man. But that that's a really interesting connection. Almost that like totally makes me think about just, just characters in general and how different people connect with them. Had a Commercial, oh, sorry. Oops, be right back. Get that, Sivo. Sorry to hear you went through that. And I'm, so, I don't know if I, I don't know if you uh, replied, Goofy. Why Why do you think Zidane is your favorite protagonist? Cheers, guys. Cool man was a long time ago. I will, I will cheer for you, my friend. Always. Ooh, I feel like that caffeine's starting to starting to kick into gear now. Starting to feel the buzz. <laughs> Always. Always. Ooh. Cheers to everyone. <laughs> More cheers. More cheers. <laughs> Ooh. Good stuff. <laughs> As much as Final Fantasy XIII is not good in my opinion, I find Lightning very interesting. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have much of an opinion on Lightning just because I'm not super familiar with her character. Did you end up completing all of Final Fantasy XIII, JP? Like, have you beat it? Also, it was about time for a leading female character. I totally agree. 
I totally agree. I love seeing games like... Like, I'm so excited for Horizon 2. I'm so excited for The Last of Us Part 2. I think it's great that... I don't know. I just think at so many games, it's just guys, you know? And women are more than capable. Absolutely outstanding in leading roles. Like, I can't even... Of course, I haven't played Last of Us Part 2, but, like, I am just so excited to see how Ellie absolutely crushes the game. Absolutely. Let's see. I did. I did finish it. Have you finished Final Fantasy XIII at all, Goofy? I just think his journey of self-discovery is pretty cool, and he seems a bit different to the protagonist before him. Less edgy and more funny. I totally agree, man. He is so... he Him and Tidus, like, are so different from Cloud and Squall. Are you ready? I am ready. Follow me. The region is waiting on the base level. Ron's fleet arrives. Yeah, just... I feel like even Zidane and Tidus are very different from one another, but just they're... they're they are the extroverted Final Fantasy leads... And Cloud and Squall are like the introverted Final Fantasy leads. So it's it's very interesting, the difference. Oh man, Last of Us 2, queer, fe queer female lead, finally. There's just, she's gonna, I know, I know Ellie's gonna be just absolutely incredible. My god, when we're watching, my wife and I watched the trailer last night. And there was a scene of the two of them kissing as they're like dancing in the... I don't know. They're like down, dancing in some kind of shed or something. And then they kiss and like the camera kind of pulls out and you see Ellie's face. And I was just telling, I like kept like rewinding that scene like so many times because I was telling my wife like it, I've never seen graphics that look this good in a video game. Like it's always the eyes, man. It's always the eyes that are so difficult to get right. And just i just kept staring in, at ellie's eyes in last of, in the trailer and i'm just like holy crap her eyes look incredible it's getting way better though vivi is my favorite in this game i agree stevo vivi is hands down one of the greatest video game characters of all time ps5 games are more d diverse as far as i saw i got to the last oh yes yes dude i remember i remember you telling me that right at the very end so I looked up the last cutscene, so kinda. I, I would say that counts as beating the game, Goofy. I would say that is absolutely not your fault. You beat the game, as far as I'm concerned. That sucks, dude. I had I had something like that happen with Final Fantasy VII at a Cosmo Canyon. Like in Bugenhagen's Observatory. My game would always get corrupted right there. So I had to buy like a whole new game to actually finish. You know, back in the days when the games would get scratched. And they'd like screw up the game. I don't know if... Question for all of you. PS5. If all of you are getting PS5s, are you all getting the digital version to save some money? Or are you getting the disk drive version? Even if it's more. Even if it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks more. Are you guys going to get the disk version? Or get the... The... Um, digital version? I don't know. <laughs> I definitely got to get... I got to get the physical physical I, there's i just still love the feeling man still love the feeling of holding the game in my hand opening it taking the disc out you know the physicality of it for me is very important oof <laughs> are you undecided goofy i'll have to do hours of research i'm a scientist i need data to decide probably the disc version but the days of the disc are numbered i agree man i agree but like pc games aren't aren't very much like that like a lot of people buy pc games on steam right and then they just save them onto their onto their computer so i mean it seems like a lot of pc people have kind of already gravitated that way but i i'm the same way man like is ps6 just like are they doing this because they already thought in their head ps6 and five or seven or eight years is going to be digital only Wait, PS5 has only disc and only... Yeah, so there's two versions of PS5s that are coming out. A regular version with the disc drive, and then a 
um, digital version with no optical disc drive whatsoever. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, it's it's like if it wasn't obvious, if it wasn't obvious, you know, in the past, it's, it's def like Steve-O said, you know, the days of the discs are numbered. Why are they loading food instead of valuables onto the ship? I wonder if they're going to take them all back to Alexandria. God, their outfits look so weird. I feel like this is the first time I've like legitimately looked at their outfits, but their outfits look so weird. Maybe they're going on a very long trip. Stop that chatter and keep loading the ship. Can you not download the games on the disc one? You can. So it's the same as like the PS4 right now. So you can like buy the physical disc or you can download it. But the digital version only downloads. You can only download the games on the digital version. So I wonder if it's going to be like $500 for the digital and like $600 for the optical. I could see something like that. All right, people, this is over my sleep time. I'd love to hang out here longer. Well, thank you so much for hanging out, JP. It was an absolute pleasure having you. Get some good rest, my friend. Xbox released a... D oh, did they? They released a digital version of the Xbox One? Good night, JP. Yep, have a nice weekend. Thank you, buddy. Then I'll get the disc one then. Yeah, I mean, just having the option, I guess, of both of them. I've ne There's only, only one, well, I guess I have bought, like, this is a digital game. Final Fantasy VIII was digital, Final Fantasy VII was digital, and I did buy the digital version of Remake, just because freaking Amazon delayed my order, but, hmm, I thought you meant you could only use discs on the disc one and only downloads on the, yeah, so... Digital one is just downloads. Optical one is downloads and discs. A couple years back. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they discontinue the disc version in five years. With the P I, I was totally thinking that, Steve-O. I was totally thinking that. With PS5 Pro. Maybe doing like 8K stuff or like 4K 120 frames or something on the PS5 Pro. But it's only digital. You know how many people that would piss off? Ugh. You know how many people that would just piss off or oh this here here you go here's one what if they pull an apple what if it's just a digital one but there's an add-on dongle accessory like an optical disk drive dongle accessory you can buy for like a hundred bucks or 150 bucks is like an add-on accessory plug into the USB-C port oh man and then they can sell sell those dongles for extra money mark my words it's, it's coming my friends most of my games are digital, to be honest. But a game I really love. Uh, is that Forza? Skyrim, I always get the discs for. Sega did that back in the 90s. They did, yeah. They did. Oh, man. They're so... I totally have a feeling they're going to do that. Totally have a feeling they're going to do that, man. Going to release, like, a PS5 Pro just digital version. And then have like a USB-C connector, optical disk drive, dongle, port thing. Everyone's taking inspiration from Apple probably in that. Dongles for days. Damn them. They think they can walk all over us. We gotta stall more. Let's keep working. Alexandra rules this continent now. Where else can they go and conquer? What do they really want? I don't know. But you know how greedy Braun is. No Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age. No Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age, man. I'm so shocked. Like, the more I think about it, I'm so shocked that they have not done anything for Final Fantasy IV, V, or VI on the PS4. I'm just so... I'm baffled. Like, those are such phenomenal games, and I feel like they're being left in the dust. Like, it's, it's difficult to play... Like, 5 especially. 5 is pretty difficult to find. I guess it depends on the trends of tech and what storage is like in 5 years. But I really think as storage capacity increases, download time decreases, that digital will just be the normal thing. They're pretty much there already. No, I totally agree, man. You know, if we have, like, a 5 terabyte PlayStation, games are, like, 200 gigabytes each. And, you know, pretty much everyone has, like, 5G or 
super fast Wi-Fi, like gigabit speeds, why wouldn't you? I'm Well, there's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't, but... I mean, publishers enjoy digital because they get more profit. It's quicker, it's easier, you don't have to go to a store. Can't resell the game, so that third market, or the used market, is kind of destroyed by it. It's coming. Some of my followers really want me to play 6, but I can't get it on the PS Store. Yeah, it's hard to find 6, man. I have the, the Super Nintendo Classic, luckily. But, so I, I can play it there, but... Oh, Kill Will, Kill, that is a cool name. Kill Will Volume 4. Thank you so much for the follow, my friend. Appreciate it a ton. I love the username. Guessing a big Kill Bill fan. Big Kill Bill fan. Let's see, it should make production costs cheaper, so in theory games, but I doubt it will. You Right, you would hope so. You would hope so that the costs would be cheaper, so games would be cheaper. Oh man, fingers crossed, I'd hope so. Thank you. <laughs> Are you a pretty big Final Fantasy fan yourself? Are you going to get PS5? We're talking about the PS5 and uh difference between digital and optical drives. I wonder where we're going next. I don't know of any kingdom that poses a threat to our country. I'm sure Queen Braun has a plan. There's no need for us to worry about such matters. Come now, we need your help. Some Lindblum soldiers have locked themselves up in the guest room. I could totally see something like that happening, though, Steve-O. I think you're right on the money with the PS5 Pro. I could totally see that being a thing. My faves, and yes. Ooh, what's your favorite Final Fantasy? Do you have a favorite one? We were just talking about our favorite Final Fantasy characters and protagonists. I wonder what Braun is going to do. Eight! Nice! I just did my first playthrough of Eight last month. Played it for the first time. It was great. What makes Eight your favorite? Big fan of like the junction system, the characters. The music in Eight is outstanding. I was, if anything, that's probably the thing I took most from Eight was the music was just 10 out of 10. The music in Eight is, I like I'm still listening to On My Way to Work. I'm still listening to like soundtrack from eight. It's incredible. I wonder what Braun is going to do. I mean, Triple Triad too is actually pretty freaking dope. Triple Triad's super fun. Sedane, do we really have to go to the Outer Continent? It was my first. Junction system is great too. It's so in I it's so interesting hearing people's like favorite Final Fantasy. I, I feel like so many people say their very first Final Fantasy is their favorite. I, and I'm the same way. Final Fantasy VII was my very first video game I ever played. And it's my absolute favorite game of all time. So, like, the nostalgia factor is strong, you know? But I do agree. I think the junction system is... It's easy to abuse, but it is super fun. It's super customizable. It's probably you junctions. I don't know, Goofy. I kind of disagree. I, I think the junctions are very fun and very customizable i just think they can be i don't know i think it's the card refinability like if the card refinability was not there i feel like it, it wouldn't be as easy to break it you know very easy to abuse it is very easy to abuse they confused me <laughs> it it's the tutorials man if i gotta say one thing about final fantasy 8 the tutorials were just like Oh, the tutorials killed me, man. They're so long. And then I feel like I'd read them and I was like, I don't even know if I understood half of what they're saying. But I do agree. I think I think the junction system is incredibly interesting. And I, I don't like the draw system at all. I hate the draw system. That was probably one of the most mixed things I had about it. But the junction aspect of it is super, super fun. Have you played Final Fantasy IX as well, Kill Will? Hey, what's up with you? You said you wanted to go. What if... What if something happens to you or Vivi? I might not be okay on my own. Are you worried about me? What? Well, I mean, um... A princess needs her elite guards, you know? I'd be stranded without you guys. Are you trying to flatter me by calling me your elite guard? Oh, do you see how she, she kind of gets the little hip thing going? 
Yes, yeah, takes forever to draw. It does. Luckily, the new version, like the remastered one, um, has the speed up functionality, which helps a ton. But yeah, I, it would almost be really fun to do Final Fantasy VIII playthrough and not draw at all, except maybe the the GFs, but not draw at all. Like get magic from the draw points, get them from refining items, and get them from refining cards. That would be interesting. That'd be a fun playthrough. Yes, but not all the way through. Is is nine, like not one of your more favorite ones? Nine is at one of my favorite games of all time. I love it. Very challenging too. It it probably would be pretty challenging. But I don't know. Trying my hardest. Yeah, I'm not a fan of how they encourage you to save magic for stats, but then it feels like you get punished for actually using the magic. I agree with that. But the one point I would kind of say on that is it makes it more, a little interesting in the sense that it becomes a risk versus reward type of situation where you equip magic to your weapons, you get stronger, but if you use it, you start to weaken yourself. So it's almost more using magic becomes more of like a risk versus reward type of situation, you know? So I don't know. I feel like I didn't like that at first, but towards the end of like my second playthrough, I started to like that a little bit. I started to appreciate that a little bit more, you know? Sorry, I was only kidding. You'll be fine with me. What about you, Dagger? We don't know anything about the Outer Continent. I've made up my mind. I don't want my mother to commit any more atrocities. All right, then. I'll protect both you and Vivi. Thank you. Yeah, true. I mean, I'll definitely say it's not... Probably not my favorite system in the entire Final Fantasy series, but I could understand for some people why it is their, is their favorite. Because it is really interesting. So much customization. So, so it's, it's like... Like if added effect was just add like the added effect material in seven was just like a built into your weapons and armor. So I don't know. I felt like the more I played eight, the more I actually really liked the junction system. The draw system can No, not the draw system, but the junctions. Ooh, sneeze. I go for the draws to boost stats and use physical combat. Yeah, that seems to be the way to go. You need to balance it, I guess. It's definitely an interesting system either way. Man. So when I so when I first played um Oh boy. Golly wants some uh Golly wants some dad jokes. <laughs> Should we do some dad jokes everybody? What? Actually, I got a new I found a new place for some dad jokes. So uh humor time how you doing though buddy how's your day going today i will say um yeah just kind of as i played more eight i started to appreciate um the junction system quite a bit more i think it's really really fun and really interesting but i can see why some people love it and why some people don't love it all right so what kind of dad jokes do we got today reddit this is my new place because uh the other dad jokes started started to repeat them so I decided to quit my job as a personal trainer because I'm not big enough or strong enough. I've just handed in my two-week notice. I like that one. I like. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> what do you call a girl who refuses to pay her bills? Bernadette. Okay. <laughs> I think that one's pretty good. What about you? Let me know. Let me know which ones. Which ones are actually pretty decent. My new girlfriend told me I'm terrible in bed. I told her it's unfair to make a, judge a judgment in less than a minute. Okay, that might be... I like that one. My new girlfriend told me I'm terrible in bed. I told her it's unfair to make a judgment in less than a minute. <laughs> Why is it called a paternity test and not a pop quiz? I don't know. I feel like that one went over my head. My son just threw a milk carton at me. How dare he? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't get the paternity test one. Not a pop quiz. The girlfriend one's funny. The girl who refuses to pay her bill, Bernadette. I think that one's funny. Personal trainer one. <laughs> pop as in father. Pop. Oh, 
pop like papa like da papa's and father pop quiz <laughs> okay okay one more one more i was telling my architect friends how much i love mc escher they all gave me some weird stares meh meh <laughs> meh there was a couple good ones the pop quiz one I feel like that one went right over my head unless you had specified it. Oh, man. Papa's and father. I don't know if I would have got that unless you told me. Boo, get off the stage. <laughs> oh, man. I thought the trainer one was pretty funny. I thought the trainer one was pretty funny. Uh, but I'm happy you're having a pretty solid day, goalie. What are you doing? Up to anything fun today? Oh, man. We're just kind of talking about the, the junction draw system in Final Fantasy VIII. I like the, the trainer and pop quiz. Pop quiz was funny when you, when you like, broke it down to me. Oh, man. Stay, I'm so glad you're here. Vivi, where's Uncle Sid? Uh, um, he said, guac guac, wait here, and went away somewhere. Where could he be? Guac, I did it. I stopped a trolley between here and the Serpent's Gate. Walk, walk. Oh man, it'd be. You should do like a take a shot every time he says walk. Oh man, I grabbed an ice cream cone and did some maintenance on my bicycle. Other than that, nothing much going on here. Hmm, it is definitely the time of year for some ice cream. My wife and I just got some. Uh, <laughs> be drunk in under an hour. Probably. He's a uh, he's quite the guacker. <laughs> the other one, it was uh you know how in some games if you die a lot, probably like what's gonna happen when I play Bloodborne? The death counter, like how people have like a death counter. I'm like, we should have a poor VV counter. So any anytime anytime something happens to VV and we go poor VV, we should have a counter for that. I saw an interesting question on Zach's Discord few minutes if you have a low alcohol tolerance <laughs> I don't know I mean quarantine has definitely upped my alcohol tolerance for better or worse if you can make a party from any three Final Fantasy characters ooh, who would it be all right I need everyone's participation in that three Final Fantasy characters of all time who would it be Ooh, Vincent all fear is a Dane. Hmm. Squall, Cloud, and Barret. Hmm. Three Final Fantasy characters of all time. I mean, I feel like most people would kind of gravitate towards their favorites, right? Ooh. I feel like you could almost word that as like, what are your favorite three five Final Fantasy characters? Squall, Cloud, and Barret. Barret would probably be a really good choice for long range. Vince would be a good choice for long range. Squall and Cloud would get on well. <laughs> All I imagine is Squall going whatever and Cloud just going not interested. Just back and forth. Whatever. Not interested. Whatever. Not interested. Whatever. Not interested. <laughs> I'll just choose the ones I know. Let's go with Aerith, Zell, and Barret. Oh god. Could you imagine Zell and Barret together? <laughs> Yo, son, how you doing today, my friend? If you can pick three Final Fantasy characters of all time and put them on a team, who's it going to be for you, son? So, oh, I, I could just imagine Zell and Barrett hitting it off tremendously. <laughs> Probably just want to knock him upside the head. Mine are based on who I think would interact interestingly together. Balthier? Oh, Balthier and Zidane, they... That would be interesting. Oh, Z Vincent. He would just be like a vampire in the back of the room. That would be great. Zell, Selfie, and Yuffie would destroy both parties. Oh, man. Or maybe I could go with Sabin instead just for the train suplex. <laughs> Yuna, Vincent, Lightning. Those are some good ones, Steve-O. Those are some good ones. Long range, limit tank. Lightning, Yuna. What did I walk into, by the way? 
if you had to pick three Final Fantasy characters from the entire series to put on a party, who would it be, son? That's what we're asking. Oh, man, I feel like I'd have to have Cloud. I'd have to have Cloud. Cloud is, like, my favorite protagonist probably of all time. So I'd have to probably have Cloud. Ooh, actually. He didn't say... It. Hold on, let me go up. Well, three Final Fantasy characters. Okay. So he didn't specify protagonists. So, I'm going with Kefka, Sephiroth, and Ultimecia. Sephiroth, Kefka, and Ultimecia. Hell yeah. Unlimited power, my friends. People discussing who their three-man team fair. <laughs> kind of tough since I haven't played much. Vincent is the only one that is my favorite. Was thinking who would make the strongest team. But we're making groups. That's an epic villain team. Meteor, Meteor for days, man. Supernova and then Meteor. Then Ultima. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even think of villains. Come on. Kefka, Sephiroth, and Ultimecia. The baddest crew around. Dude, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. If we're doing villains... All right, if we're doing villains, who would be your three villain team? I'm going to go in Zach's Discord and just post that. <laughs> the whole universe is like, why do I hear boss music? <laughs> Kefka is probably the strongest villain from the, the series, right? Kefka is... I don't know, man. Sephiroth literally becomes a god at the end of, at the end of Seven. Vayne, Kuja, and Sephiroth. Yeah, I mean, Kefka though, I mean, Kefka literally destroys the world, so, or, like, kind of destroys the world, so, I don't know, I feel like Kefka is, Kefka is like the Joker of Final Fantasy. Kefka does, he does become a god too. Hmm, imagine, like, God Sephiroth and God Kefka battling it out. Kefka literally becomes a god too. One flaw with your party if you choose all villains. What's what's the flaw, Jay? I mean, I guess we probably don't have any white magic. <laughs> Shanto for interdimensional travels. Claire, lightning frown for god powers. And Boko because I want a comfy seat. Uh, I haven't played anything older than seven. If you do get a chance to play six, if you if you like 2D graphics, Final Fantasy VI is my absolute favorite 2D game of all time. It is beyond incredible kill will i highly would recommend it heroes always win uh i mean you got a point you do got a point heroes do always win i guess we're just destined to fail right we're just destined to fail as villains <laughs> i don't know i mean yeah i guess you're right i'm trying to think of a book or a movie or a game where a villain actually where a villain does win. I mean, Kafka wins, kind of, but then he loses. Damn you, plot armor. <laughs> Aye. Lightning is a... T <laughs> time traveler who changes all timelines and becomes a god. Lightning on her own is pretty much OP protagonist or otherwise. Really? Wait, is that the whole story of Lightning? I haven't... I haven't beaten or played much of Final Fantasy XIII, so... Do they do, do they do time travel in 13? Please tell me. Please tell me it ain't so. Delete me. I'm spoiling. <laughs> he just disappeared into nothing. No, I don't think that counts as a win. I mean, fair enough. Kefko, Ultimacia, and Sin. Ooh. What about you, Jade? Do you got a favorite? If you got to pick three Final Fantasy characters, who are you picking? Heroes, villains, mashups... Do you think there are any villains that would work with any party members in other games? Garland is obviously the best villain. He will knock us all down. <laughs> Remember Lightning Returns? I haven't played Lightning Returns myself. Lightning is the strongest protagonist. Very interesting. Maybe that's why she's got such badass hair. she got that pink hairdo. It almost looks like she has a mullet from some of the photos I've seen of her. But yeah, I haven't played I haven't played through 13 though, so 
But I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm definitely going to play 13. I'm definitely going to play 15. Who's... Who's the protagonist in 15? I feel like I didn't even get far enough in 15 to recall who the protagonist was. 13 felt ver very linear. It definitely is, yeah. Noctis? Oh, maybe I mean antagonist. The bad, the bad person. Who's the bad person in 15? I was like, wait, Noctis goes from good to evil? I must have missed that with 15. Aside from lightning, I'd place the Dane as a potentially powerful protagonist because of his potential to surpass Kuja. He's got that Ultima Ultima magic. Can't remember his name. Prompto and Zidane work, would work so... Dude. Oh, man. Prom that And Zell. If we got Prompto, Zell, and Zidane... Prompto, Zell, and Zidane. That would be a party. Noctis is probably the only protagonist that could give Lightning a run for her money. You think so? You think so? I don't know. You think even over... Even over Cloud? It would be a funny party. Require hydration. My friend, cheers to you, cheers to everyone. Oh man, good coffee. It's good for the soul. <laughs> but later in Solomon's show, he's just a pawn in the greater scheme of things. It would be a funny party. He achieves something akin to a god. In 15? Man. Man, I gotta play 13 and 15. I really gotta finish them. That would be great. Yeah, dude, if, if there was Zell and then Prompto and Zidane, oh my goodness. The energy would be bouncing off the wall. I didn't have too much coffee today. It's warm enough already. Oh man, I... T tell me if I'm weird. If y'all want to roast me for this, go ahead. But I don't like hot coffee at all. At all. I don't enjoy hot coffee. I don't drink hot coffee. I don't like hot coffee. It's all about iced coffee. I'm a, I'm a hundred percent iced coffee. I can't even remember the last time I got hot coffee. It's been a, a long time. Oh yeah, I'm all about the iced coffee. Roast me for this, what a great... <laughs> I, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Roast me for my coffee. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, Will. Cloud isn't really that strong when you consider other characters lore. Agreed, agreed. Agree, Goofy. He does have Mako and Fusion in the S cells, though, which do give him some more power than, say, over Squall, for example, who's just a plain, just a plain old human. <laughs> Kuja's a planet destroyer and actually succeeds in this game. Sedane is supposed to be stronger. That said, Kuja never loses a single battle in this game. Don't we? Don't we beat him at the end? And he summons Necron. I like my coffee warm. Never, never had iced coffee, but we'll grind you down for your tastes if you want. Grind you down. The puns. The puns are so good. You've never had hot co or you've never had iced coffee, goalie? Oh, man. It's so good. It's delicious, my friend. It's so good. I mean, actually, to be fair, I guess this isn't even really like coffee coffee. It's just, it's four shots of espresso. Like halfway with milk, a little bit of French vanilla pumps in there. So, I mean, if anything, it's really just milk and espresso. But, I mean, I guess espresso is just stronger coffee, so. That'll show them not to fool around in my castle. Now go, guac guac. More shots to be taken. The excavation site is like a maze. Be careful not to get lost. And take this with you. It's a rag. You big dope. It's not just a rag guac. This is a national treasure of Lindblum. That is an ancient map of the entire world. Wow. Thanks. Received world map. Saying it's a rag. Well, most of your days are dark and cold. Something has to warm, warm you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you live somewhere where it's pretty cloudy and like rainy a lot? Where, I mean, I live in Washington State, and it is it is cloudy as can be here, man. So, I feel that. No, his final attack is so strong, he opens up an alternate dimension. Necron isn't even summoned, nor does Necron lose. Necron himself just gives up after seeing your party's 
will to survive. Confused as to why he wouldn't want to return to the void. Very interesting. I feel like if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, my friends, the ending of Final Fantasy IX, I've played it, I think, four times. I think this is my fifth time I've played it. The ending of Final Fantasy IX always goes over my head. But I'm going to pay... I'll pay extra attention to that. That is very interesting. Terra is probably one of the strongest due to her innate magic abilities. Yeah, Terra's awesome. She, she's literally half human and half, uh, like half summon. What do they call them in six? I don't think they call them idolins, do they? Summon. What do they call them in six? Kuja's also just a frustrated person in general. Mad at his dad for mis making Zidane stronger. Oh, from Finland? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've talked about that. Finland. Finland's beautiful. I would love to move to Finland. I would love to move to Finland. I mean, any of the Scandinavian... Any of the Scandinavian countries would just be incredible. What have I started? <laughs> we're having some good, some good combos. I mean... Oh, but if we're talking strongest, I mean, yeah. If, I, I would really have to go with Kefka... Sephiroth. Essentially, whoever becomes a god. Whoever becomes a god with ultimate power. Kuja. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'd probably go Kefka, Sephiroth, and Ultimacia. I mean, because Ultimacia is is near godlike and oh, pretty much is trying to become a god in her own right, so. Very interesting. Super interesting. Super interesting topic. Super interesting ideas stares at cloud of darkness <laughs> Ooh, are we uh skipping some frames finland isn't in scandinavia geographically it is a nordic country though and that's what some people mean when they say scandinavia gotcha 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 yeah i remember um in 20 i think it was 2016 my wife and i actually applied tried to apply for citizenship in for Canada and then also I think Norway I think we and we uh, we got declined for both so maybe maybe one day we can look at like immigrating outside of the US I mean because the US is pretty cool but like as I'm sure you all are very aware of it's a it's an interesting country the US is a very interesting country now go before they find you. It almost feels like Canada is like a chiller version of the United States, so. Sedane, Vivi, please protect Princess Garnett. Okay. Plus, I mean, like, Europe would be pretty damn cool to live in. Somewhere like Norway or Finland or so many. Also, controversial opinion, tax-funded healthcare opinion. tax funded healthcare for the win but minfilia from 14 could be considered pretty strong i don't i don't know i don't know that character myself so i'm not super familiar with minfil minfilia minfilia that's a pretty dope name though cloud of darkness as a villain is a representation of the void one could argue that even a god of magic is a god of something with an end, while any character that represents the void will win in the long run. Existentialism sense in. <laughs> Literally becomes the voice for the crystal. Interesting. Are you a pretty big fan of 14 yourself, Will? Man, people, people love 14. I'm telling you, Goofy, I'm, I'm going to do it one day, man. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get 14 one day, and we're going to binge play it, man. Uh, it's freaking, freaking corporate job, though. Glad someone else agrees to it. Shadowbringers really brings out her true power as well. Man, damn 40 weeks, 40 hour a week job. Uncle Sid. Guac. Oh, there's another shot. Don't worry about me. I'm stronger than I look. Now, go. They'll squeeze all the oglop oil out of my body if we're caught. Let's go, dagger. That'd be that'd be quite the stream. Take a, take a shot every time he says guac. 
That story, though, is fantastic. Do it, boy. Chaos conf confuses me. Dude, everyone says, yeah, everyone is saying the story of 14 is super interesting and, like, different, like, developments and places it, it goes. I think he's considered a god. He did create a time loop. I might start a new character with you. We could do, do a co-stream. Dude, that would be pretty fun. That'd be pretty fun. Man, my only thing with 14 is, like, just with any game that's super big like that is the time commitment to, to, to uh, the time commitment for it. Man, I'll join in on that. That would be so much fun, dude, to just have, like, a bunch of friends together. Just, like, all streamers all, like, co-streaming it. Dude, that would be a ton of fun. I won't consider reality warpers automatic gods, otherwise Ultimisia is a god. I mean, Ultimisia is on the verge of time compression to the point of becoming a god, so she is, like, she is, I mean, Ultimisia is, like, 99% almost a god, you know? Goddess. Man, my my, they have an Oglop for a region and buffoons for soldiers. Why do they take so long to load supplies? Hmm... You two, I did not give you permission to rest. I understand that things are moving slow, but keep in mind that the next mission is about to begin. Oh man, sounds like my boss at work sometimes. <laughs> uh, I know things are slow. Let's clean. Every RPG goes from helping the old lady take out her garbage to kill God himself. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like The Witcher 3, man. The Witcher 3, when I was playing, I only played like 10 hours of it, but there was a, one of the side quests was like, find some, is it find somebody's pan? You have to like find somebody's pot or pan or something? And I'm just like, what is, what, what? Oh, and the one in Remake, dude. The one in Remake of finding the, the little girl's cat, I'm like, why are we doing this? Why, what? We don't need those kind of side quests. We don't need those kind of side quests. Ultimacy is pretty insanely strong, even without being a god, though. She is. I really, I just really wish we got... That's the biggest thing I take away from Final Fantasy VIII, is I just wish we got more character developments, you know? I just wish we got more stuff with characters, learn more about the characters. Literally, the supernatural storyline, <laughs> pretty much. Sprinkle a couple crystals and chocobos in there and you got a Final Fantasy. That just gets into the discussion of how much reality warping one must achieve to be considered a god. A living god can be a decent compromise. Eight is sadly a stable time loop, though. Yeah, her gold-coated gold pen. <laughs> exactly, yep, yep. Oh, man, there's just some of those side quests you're just like, this does not need to be in here. Ultimacia can literally block you from doing your ordinary actions, even stop you from saving your game. <laughs> oh, man. Very true. Very true. When I walked into that castle and I'm like, wait, why? Where are my GFs? Where is my magic? Why can't I do anything? Why can I only attack? Yeah, that was a... Uh, I, I love... Like, even though the story of 8, um, I'm a little... I just wish there was more of it. But man, yeah, I was not a fan of the castle. Oh, I loved the castle at the end of eight. I thought it was so cool. And I thought the way, like, I actually loved that you had to fight all these bosses to unlock your abilities. She's your older sibling confirmed. I, I, thought, I thought the castle was one of my favorite Final Fantasy dungeons of all time. I thought it was so cool. It was annoying. I could totally see how some people would super be turned off by it or like it's annoying or whatever but like it was it was fun it was fun when i found a yes 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 goofy when you find a save point and realize you couldn't save i was like wtf same dude same i'm like what 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 first time i played i had like three strong characters till i figured out how to grind on the island closest to hell after you get ragnarok Man, my saving grace, honestly, was Cactar Island. Like, going to Cactar Island for, like, like 30 minutes with the speed-up function, taking out the Cactars, literally learning all of the GF abilities, like, start to finish in, like, 30 minutes was, was my saving grace. 
and then going, yeah, to the island closest to hell, the island closest to heaven, and all those draw points. Dude, I had no idea there were hidden draw points like that all over the map. I, I like, literally want to replay Final Fantasy VIII for a third time, <laughs> um, and just, like, bash the X button across the whole map and see if I can find all the hidden draw points. Because apparently they're, like, sprinkled throughout the entire map, not even on those two islands. Like, they're they're all over the map. Yeah, Cactar Island was insane. Dude, in Jumbo Cactar, he had a freaking mustache. I had... Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, Will! Seriously, like, um, like there's, like, hidden draw points on the world map, like, all over. Like, it, it, I had no idea either until second playthrough getting towards the end and, and someone in chat was like yeah there's like hidden draw points throughout the entire map not even on those two islands it, my face too goofy i'm like what literally just makes you want to go to the world map and just non-stop hit x and see what you can find slightly unpopular opinion but in final fantasy tactics advance you play as the villain your entire goal throughout the game is to destroy the world just so you can return home really I've never played I've never played Tactics and I haven't played Tactics Advance, but that would be super cool. In all honesty, I would love. I think it'd be so cool. Can I post the link? Absolutely, Stevo. Go for it, man. It'd be so cool if we could play a Final Fantasy and be and like be Tonberry and Chocobo and be like a bomb and be Cactar. Like if we were the monsters. And these humans are like trying to take over the world and like you know your your cactar your tonberry you got to stop them that'd be so flip-flopped but it'd be so fun you destroy ivalice it's a dark twist on it. it's a very cheery game i hate to leave but the wife left so i'm just gonna throw on nine myself Let's see Let's see uh, oh are you heading out will if you're heading out man it was an absolute joy having you thank you so much for hanging out today thank you so much for the follow i hope to see see you more in the future my friend you have an awesome day dude let's see oh yeah let's check that link map of the hidden drop -away. holy crap dude there really are yes sir not a problem dude everywhere they're like everywhere man Oh, and there's some, like, really good ones. Like, there's Ultima sprinkled throughout the world. Meltdown. Ooh, Flare. Very interesting. Meteor, Holy, Flare, Ultima. Wow. I look forward to it. Very interesting. I had no idea about that, honestly. It's a very kiddish game, though. This is quite the hype up for it. Have any of you ever played Final Fantasy Mystic Quest? The premise is you're trapped in a magic book that brings you into a magic world based on some Final Fantasy game. Most likely 12. I look forward to it. Hey, sometimes kiddish games. You know, as, as I'm growing up and getting older and older, dude, going back and watching, like, movies, like, kid movies, do you all experience this as well? Like, being an adult, being 20, you're 5, 30, 40, whatever, going back and watching movies you loved as a kid and just perceiving them completely different. Like when I watch movies like Pixar movies, I, my, I used to watch them so much as a kid. My mom and dad would just put them on all the time and we'd watch them. But like watching Pixar movies now as an adult is a totally different experience. It's like catching so many of these like adult themes and just like real life themes in there. It's, it's so interesting, you know, going back and watching very kid style i mean even disney animated movies you know as an adult and just perceiving them differently do all of you ever do all of you ever experience that i'm feeling that too with games like i feel that same way playing through games um especially like the final fantasies that i grew up playing like 10 9 7 like replaying them as a as an adult almost like look at the characters and perceive them differently you know the machine over there stopped and the trolley stopped coming right yes it made the strange walk walk sound i wanted to go shopping before we left the harbor any word from the outlet 
from the lookout. Did I just say out outlook? No, ma'am, nothing. This must be Regent Sid's doing. He's hiding something. What we come with us, you two. Find the Regent. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness. Being an adult is why I find Final Fantasy Tactics to be horrific. Although the protagonist is making the right choice in the end, he doesn't know why his choice is right. He just wants to put his brother in a wheelchair. Interesting. Final Fantasy Tactics. Very interesting. I've never played Tactics, but man, people people seem to love it. I think the only, the only person I've heard kind of say maybe not so kind things about Tactics is probably my buddy Rudo. I don't think he likes Ivalice in general, but a lot of people have really positive things to say about Tactics, so that's that's really interesting. Which Tactics does he say has Balthier? War of the Lions, the update remastered of Tactics. Very inter that's super interesting. I want to play tactics one day for sure. A letter from Mu A letter from Mudon. Thanks, Kupo. Mudon. Mudon to Munte. Oh, it's terrible, Kupo. Maki from the castle is missing. Did the Alexandrian soldiers kidnap him? Or did the black mages eat him? Kupo. I'm so worried. W what's going on? Kupo. I want mail, Koopo. Final Fantasy Tactics is visibly horrific, even as an adult. The Tactics Advance is easy to look at with those rose colored glasses as a kid. Very interesting. So when you say, like, horrific, like, the story is horrific, like it's, like, it's a great story and it's, like, a great game, but it's just, like, very adult-themed? Is that kind of what you're saying? I've heard very similar things about Last of Us Part Two coming out. I haven't heard any spoilers whatsoever but man there are people saying there are some very 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 adult related stuff that happens in in part two coming out um like uncomfortably adult stuff so oh man do you ever have that like where you watch watch a movie or a tv show or play a game that's just like so horrific or like so difficult to digest and it's incredible piece of like cinematic art or game art or whatever it's just incredible piece of of art but you just don't think you'd watch it or play it again man i've had a couple experiences like that I'm going to the excavation site it's located directly north of here you'll see a pond shaped like a gourd you might encounter some strange monsters hey you want to buy something yeah, maybe some items. Life's gonna be tough. You wanna buy something? Make me that good old profit, baby. <laughs> I think I pretty much got everything. Yeah, looks like we pretty much got everything. Maybe we could do some chocobo hot and cold. Hey, you wanna buy something? So, where we go to the excavation site, this is where we have to have Queena to advance the story. Did you all know that in um, you don't necessarily have to have Queena the first part of the game? You can completely skip out on Queena and then get Queena at this part. I didn't know that. Hey, dude, I'm going to head out. Enjoy the rest of your stream and see you all later, chat. Goofy, it is always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for stopping by, dude. You enjoy the rest of your day as well, my friend. Mind if I drop a link that memes the motivations of the protagonist of Tactics Advance? Because that game is just cutesy, cheesy, simple writing. Absolutely, go for it. Just as motivation being written simplistically rather than being truly terrifying. Oh yeah, totally. Let's see, I, I think we can do more ho Chocobo Hot and Cold, if I can recall. Man, Chocobo Hot and Cold 2 with the speed-up functionality is just phenomenal in this game. Helps so much.
The first panel is a protagonist's friend bleeding from the snowball fight they just experienced, by the way. Alright. I wish to be in Final Fantasy Tactics. This place is great. Dad, you're going home. Very interesting. I feel like without context, I, might, I don't quite understand it. But very interesting nonetheless. I like the pink hair. <laughs> Man, you know one thing, honestly, and I just thought of this, but one thing I've kind of been thinking of would be a ton of fun to do. With context, it's sad. Gotcha, gotcha. I think it'd be really fun to do... I see a lot of people do, like, cosplay and stuff where they, like, dress up as a character of the game they're playing. Seems like that would be a ton of fun to do. I just wonder how people make these cosplay outfits or if they just, like, order them on a website and then just, like, put them on. It seems like some people, like, literally from scratch just completely make their entire outfit, which seems incredible. That'd be fun. That'd be a ton of fun to just, like, maybe first day you're streaming a new game, like, dressing up as the character or something. I mean, if I'm going to play Last of Us Part 2, I could, uh, maybe I got the Joel beard, you know? The Joel beard a little bit. Put on some plaid. <laughs> maybe cut my hair. Man, I haven't had a haircut in God knows how long. My hair's, like, super long. Let's see. There are different levels of cosplay. It'd be fun if you're into it. I think it'd be really interesting. I think it'd be really, like... I don't know. I think it would be a little interesting. Ooh, the success rate of steel. That is a super good one to have. Flee. I don't really flee too often. But status man eater. Bandit. Now we can steal better. Cool, cool. Oh man, are you playing? I don't know if I've asked. Are you playing any specific game right now, son? Like anything you're diving into right now? Some people make their cosplays on stream, though it's a niche thing to watch. I do think when some people do like art and stuff on stream, I think that's super cool. I'd love to do something like that. Play hot and cold. You need Choco, Koopo. Go outside and use Gasol Greens while standing on Chocobo footprints to call him. All right, we can do that. I'd completely forgotten that you actually have to go into the menu and use Gasol Greens and then Choco will come. So, a couple days ago when I was on this part, I was just running over the Chocobo tracks waiting to see him pop up in battle. Same like, like Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> and then after like five or six battles, I'm like, wait, I don't think that's the way you get Choco. I think you literally just <laughs> use, the, use the green here. Let's see, I'm slowly tackling the games in the collection I shared last time, the $5 bundle. I I really think I'm gonna buy that. That looks super cool. I think it would be really fun to do like a stream of just trying various different games like that, you know? I'm super intrigued by that. Like indie titles, you know? Games you never played before. I think that'd be a ton of fun, honestly. You, you like totally got me intrigued by that, honestly. All right, 60 gil per game. Got to do the speed up. I right, speed mode, R1. All right, I think that works. It's honestly might be my... Let's see. The selection would have you set for a good year or two, even. I wonder how long it takes to... Uh, I wonder how long it would take to, like, go through all of them. Or not even all of them, but, like... I feel like I don't think I've ever really played. Actually, I have played one indie game. I think it was um, Limbo. Was it called Limbo? I think it was called Limbo. I bought it on the, uh, the App Store and played it on my smartphone. It was pretty cool. I feel like I just I didn't get too big into it. But I played it for a little bit. It was kind of like a, I'm on break, kind of play it for a little bit. It's a pretty cool game. 
Oh, where? What? I'm like, damn, that one's taking a taking a minute. Uh, that's amazing. Celeste is super fun. Celeste alone would be fun. Selection have you set? Celeste. Is that one of the be the better ones to to go into? Celeste. I'll double the points from here. I'll give you 10 extra seconds. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? There we go. Come on, come on. Where oh man, it's over here. Vamos a Flamenco. Oh, can we get the last one? I don't think so. No, darn it. Oh, almost had them all. This game I've played and got sucked into. What's it about? What's Celeste about? Do we get no chocographs? Is it like a platformer or like what kind of game is it? Honestly, when I watched the PS5, um, presentation there was some interesting indie games that looked really cool there was like a cat one that I actually thought looked pretty dope um, there was one that looked really really colorful very like reminded me of journey a lot that looks super cool too holy crap come on where is this over here choco Okay, doubling points. Oh man, where are we at? Alright, chocograph. We need more chocographs. Where are my chocographs? Wow, where Wow, it's amazing that you found so many, Koopo! But you need to stop. I'll go out of business if you keep going, Koopo. I'll give you a special bonus if you just quit now. It's a tough platformer where you climb a mountain and it's atmospheric as fuck. <laughs> Almost didn't get sleep getting frustrated playing that game. Really? Really? Is it like... Is the difficulty pretty intense on it? Chocograph? I don't see a chocograph. If you had to live in the world of one of the Final Fantasies, which would it be? Oh, super easy, steve -o. Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X is the most beautiful video game world I've ever seen in my life. Breath of the Wild would be pretty close. But in terms of just Final Fantasy, like, Final Fantasy X is just, I mean, aside from, aside from Sin, you know, kind of killing everyone and all that. But aside from Sin, uh, yeah, but Sin, maybe, uh, maybe Final Fantasy X 2 then. But yeah, the world of Spira is just incredible. Incredibly gorgeous. Incredibly beautiful. Honestly, the, the atmosphere in the world alone of 10 is, is just enough to, to recommend it to somebody that has never played a Final Fantasy game before. Here's a question for you all. And I, I saw this on Twitter the other day. I think this is an interesting one. If somebody said, told you that they want to play a Final Fantasy game, but they have no idea where to start, what would be the first Final Fantasy you would recommend them to start with? So if I'm like, dude, these Final Fantasy games seem really big and like I'm in interested in trying them, what would you recommend as the first one I play? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by your thoughts on that. He comes back in, oh, 10.2? Really? I did not know that. Sin does? I feel like first Final Fantasy game, I mean, I already, I already know know what I would probably recommend, but I'm interested in, in your thoughts. Wow, did we already get all eight? That was pretty fast. Any chocographs? No chocographs. Probably a remake or 15. Celeste has tight controls and it's kind of screen-based. You respawn immediately after failing and you fail a lot. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, very interesting. I still have that whole list you gave or you sent me um, popped up as well. I think I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, remake 15 or 10. For me, I would highly recommend Final Fantasy 10. I think that is an absolutely phenomenal place to start because it has it has 
everything that makes modern games like modern i feel like but has a lot of the classic like nine previous to nine um elements in it so yeah i think final fantasy 10 is just a really really great place to start and then if they want more turn-based then they could go nine and below or if they want more action they could go 12 and above you know sphere grid is too confusing in my opinion really you think so what what about the sphere grid do you think is confusing i will say the one thing i do wish this i wish there was an automatic mode kind of like what you can do in final fantasy 7 remake you know like in final fantasy 7 remake with the the weapon grid how you can just click automatic and just once you get points the points automatically ap apply um i wish something like that could be done with the sphere grid so like if you have the ability sphere and your next thing is an ability it just automatically buys it that way you don't have to con constantly go in because man the, you probably spend a good what five percent of the game just in the sphere grids 10 is my suggestion to get into the series as a whole it's turn-based and linear so it's good for people who aren't even used to rpgs and most of them have atbs for a newcomer to rpgs yeah i think if they just had some kind of like automatic sphere grid element where you can just click a button and then it just automatically buys the sphere not buys but you know like uses the ability spheres and the power spheres and everything i think that would make it better but I don't know, maybe it's because I've played Final Fantasy games previously, so I guess maybe I it, I didn't even think about that. Like, someone that's never played an RPG before, if they would find the sphere grid confusing. I could imagine someone that's never played a game where you have, like, character progression or, like, leveling up. My wife and I were actually talking about this last night, how I was telling her, like, it'd be really cool if there was a, a Zelda game with, like, RPG elements where Link could level up get stronger physical attacks, get stronger, like, defense stats, and just kind of, like, level up. She disagreed. She said, like, Breath of the Wild is, like, perfect as it is. And we're using Breath of the Wild just as an example. But I don't know. I'm the opposite. Like, I, I do enjoy character progressions and physical, like, strength stats and defense stats and luck stats and speed stats. It'll, I think it'd be really interesting to see a like a Breath of the Wild with a Link that has character progression, you know, or leveling progression. Maybe that's the better, maybe that's the better term. Oh man, we found all eight. Let's see, seven is quite a good one as well. You can win the game literally just by using the attack command. <laughs> very true. I uh, I very much found that out when I did my No Materia challenge. Literally just hit the attack button and, and you're good. No Choco Graph again. Hmm. The sphere grid is heavily limited in the beginning, so you still follow along the lines on the grid. People aren't exploring the branching pathways or optimizing it. That's how I see it. Just just the look of it is overwhelming. Like, WTF does this do? What am I doing this? I only know this because I try to get my girlfriend to play 10 and she isn't a gamer. Very interesting. Very interesting. I, I almost want, like, my wife to play Final Fantasy X, just as someone that's never played a Final Fantasy before. Um, she's never played Final Fantasy. I don't think she's played RPG. She, like, she's literally, she's played first-person shooters. She's played platformers. She's played, like, like Legend of Zelda-style games. But I don't think she's ever played a single RPG-style game. It'd be really fun to get her to play Final Fantasy X, just to get her, her thoughts and opinions on it. And maybe like Final Fantasy VII Remake after. If only. If only. I can't seem to get her to stream though. She doesn't seem too intrigued by it. She seems a little bit. But we'll see. Eight would be... A oh, The Adventure of Link was the only RPG in the genre of that series. I mean, but don't, do you guys think that would be pretty cool too? If like, imagine Breath of the Wild. And you click the menu button. You got your food items. You got your weapons. You got... Your map and all that and then a tab over has like link level 14 attack stat like 17 defense 14 magic attack like 22 like i think that'd be really cool you know and i mean they already have like the the weapons already have an attack stat 
the enemies have health points. So, like, like it's already built in there. The only thing that would add to it would just be Link individually getting stronger and having more of an effect on the attacks and the defense, you know? I think that'd be... I think that'd be really interesting. Hmm. I don't imagine they would probably ever do that because they've gotten... They've done perfect without any kind of leveling progression like that. I feel like that'd be super cool to see. Can confirm started with 8. That's why 8 is higher up on my list than others. It would be a terrible one because of Junction. I think I think the tutorials in 8 and how they explain the Junctions and all of that, I think it's... There's too much tutorials in 8 and, and it's confusing, so... I mean, I love the Junction system. I think that was one of my favorite things about the game, but yeah, they... They do not do a good job of explaining it well. Story of the Ten is one of the most accessible, though. I totally agree. And the love story, like, between Titus and Yuna, Titus and Jekt, like, I totally agree. You should do joint streaming, pull up another chair and play games together like his and hers. We've we've actually messed around and play, played around with that. Um, maybe we've been thinking of doing Mario Kart one of these days, so... I think I think it's coming, my friends. I've had problems getting friends to play Final Fantasy because of the language, though. As English isn't the main language here, they didn't understand 15 due to the dialogue. It doesn't help too that in a lot of a lot of the Final Fantasy games, there's very Final Fantasy terms in there, like as we we're talking earlier with 13, like Lassie and Falsy and Cocoon. And so if if English isn't even your main language, and hearing all these terms, I mean. I'm a native English speaker, and, and 13 still confused the hell out of me, so I think that could totally be a, a hiccup for some people, because there's a lot of dialogue in Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is very story-based. It is a story-based game that just happens to have some some combat and mini-games thrown in. Final Fa The fantasy world lends itself to an easier translation in an RPG setting, but I can only enjoy it... If leveling is limited to maybe 30 levels. You ever thought of doing like a community stream where you play games with members of your community? Could do it as a part of Mario Kart, for example. 13 would be terrible one because everything is explained in a menu. I've thought of that. Yeah, I was talking to Goofy a little bit about that. Doing something like that with maybe like Final Fantasy 14. And just getting as many people on as possible and like hanging out and playing with them. Um, or even doing like Mario Kart. I've never played online Mario Kart with like specific people, so I might need some help kind of setting it up. But yeah, if we ever decide to, to do something like that, absolutely. That would, I, I would love to do that. Like with all of you to, to do online games and play with everyone, like that would be so much fun. So yeah, if you all are down, I mean, I, I would definitely be down to look into doing something like that. And I mean, Mario Kart, man. Mario Kart is so good. Mario Kart is just legendary game or the one she's not really into but i really want to get is super is uh super smash bros yeah doing smash would be a ton of fun i feel like final fantasy 9 is two player final fantasy 9 is two player it's it's one player isn't it is there an option for Really? No way. Is there, like... How do you go to the menu config? Combat tutorial, tutorial title screen. I don't know how to do it in the remake. You can set controller. So, really? Really? How does that work? Like... How does that work? I am incredibly intrigued. I'll Google it. I mean, if that's... Really? I wonder how that would work. Maybe, like, four characters, so, like, what I control Zidane and Vivi, and player two controls Dagger and Quina? You can control separate party members. Very interesting. I... Very interesting. I'm intrigued. I wonder if that's a thing that can be done on the remake. Or on the remaster, I should say. I wonder if, if Wifey would... I don't think she's 
as into Final Fantasy uh, IX as, as some... She, I don't know. She just... I don't think she seems to like some of the older games. I could totally be wrong, but she doesn't... She didn't seem as interested in, like, 8 or 9 as she was when I played Final Fantasy VII Remake. She was, like, really interested in Remake. Maybe it's, like, the age of the games? I don't know. I wonder how some people feel, like, playing these games with no nostalgia factor and just going back and playing with, like, these graphics and this layout. I feel like because a big thing of why I love the games, and I'm sure a lot of reason why... A lot of you enjoy the games too, is like the nostalgia factor, you know? Hmm. I mean, I also just love the graphics. The graphics, the story, the music. I feel like that has nothing to do with the nostalgia factor. The music is incredible. Holy crap, Choco. We're. Come on, dude. It's right here. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Nope. Time's up. Remasters based off the PC version, which did not have that feature. Oh, bummer. The OG PS1 has two player though. PC version is a port of the mobile version. Mobile version. I haven't gotten a chocograph. I wonder. I haven't gotten a single chocograph in this whole time. I might do it one more time and then I might call it because maybe there's no more chocographs here. I remember he did say something about there's no more chocographs, but I thought, you know, at this part in the game there would be, there'd be some more. They like respawn. I might be mistaken though. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come on. Q, Q, Q. I mean, when you think about it, it's a little mean that we're making Choco just bash his beak nonstop in the ground. That sounds a little painful. Just bash, 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 bash. Poor birdie. If I was a chocobo, chocobo guy, I would not do this to my poor bird. I gotta say, if there is one thing though I could make real from Final Fantasy games, I would love chocobos. I would absolutely, hands down, have a have a pet chocobo, hands down. I'd have like dogs. Maybe a cat and a chocobo. Hell yeah. Come on, where are you at? You're right here, come on. What the heck, where are you at? My goodness. Ooh, with one second left. Yo, Ice, welcome back, my friend. How you doing, buddy? And you're searching for chocographs. Isn't it a different forest have some? Give me some of that choco steak. Don't be eating my bird, Steve-o. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think the different forests have some. Maybe I did get... Maybe I must have got all of them already, so... We might be done here. Yeah, but didn't get any there. Choco wings, no. Don't do that, man. A poor Choco. Oh, man. Honestly, those, those would be like the biggest drumsticks of all time. Those would be massive drumsticks. Ooh. Alright. How many points do we got? I probably want the robe of lords. I'm good. Just got back from an impromptu breakfast with my parents. Home chilling. How's Final Fantasy today? It's going pretty good, man. I'm trying to uh, just trying to find some choco graphs, but I think I got all of them. So, but how was breakfast though? Let's see, I think part of my reason why I also wouldn't suggest 15 is that its gameplay is action oriented. It doesn't lend itself to transferring to other Final Fantasy titles, but would work well for the Kingdom Hearts series. That is a phenomenal point, son, and I very much agree with that. Go into the menu and it will show you which ones you got. Yeah, let's see. I got these. I was just thinking like at this point of the game, maybe some other ones had respawned there. Yeah, I still got quite a few I gotta get. Breakfast was good. Homemade French. Ooh, man. Mmm. Some homemade French toast. That sounds delicious. Oh, man. That sounds really good, honestly. They don't respond. I don't think each force has a set limit. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I did get some items then. Got some cool items. I could be really wrong. I think... I mean, I think you're right. Because I do remember each one. I mean, it looks like I already have a good chunk of them. 
So, yeah, it might just be... I think there's, what, three more? Three more forests? Three more... There's the... Hmm. I'm trying to remember. There's the, the one in the clouds. There's the lagoon one. Maybe there's only two more. But yeah, if you really want to get into it, just get into it. 50 is very accessible for sure. I think that's a really good point, honestly. Just Google's first one has nine. First one has nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine then. <laughs> okay. Music is so good. It just relaxes me. It says inventory nine. Yeah. Oh, does it? <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I struggle to read. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I struggle to read. Boo, doo, 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 doo. Top right. <laughs> Good catch, my friends. Y'all making me want to read download 15. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes I struggle to write. <laughs> yeah, have you uh, have you played 15 all the way through, Will? Yeah, I really like I, I don't know I didn't I feel like I didn't like the battle mechanics much of 15 and I mean I didn't I didn't really like Kingdom Hearts battle style too much but the hunts were fun and I guess I guess the hunts do require fighting I don't know the fighting just felt very easy you know I don't even know where I'm going I think I'm just jamming uh Final Fantasy tiles are just too good. They really are. They sure are. Remake is pretty much the same combat as 15. Oh, I disagree. I think I think 15 and Remake are like super different. E easy gameplay is accessible, but did you find it too repetitive? Yeah, I felt like a lot of it was just bashing square to do the, the zoom in attacks. And then trying and like triggering the the combo attacks, you know. I felt like a lot of it was was that. Um, yeah, too repetitive. That's probably the good work. Remake battle system. <laughs> I sometimes struggle to talk. <laughs> Remake's battle system is based off 15 system. It even reuses a bunch of the code. And I can see like some of the similarities between it. But I mean, yeah, refined. That would probably be a good word for it. Refined. Although I do wish Remake did have some of those combo attacks similar to 15. Like Cloud and Tifa teaming up and doing like some super cool or super cool attack or, you know, Aerith and Barret. I felt like that was definitely missing. Um, yeah, I felt like that was definitely re or missing quite a bit in Remake. But I can see the similarities for sure. I, I definitely think 15 or excuse me, Remake with more of its materia, with more of its, um, like, switching between the party members. I don't know. Remake is definitely one of my favorite battle systems I've ever, ever played, though. I think they got as close to perfect with active time as they've done. As, as Square Enix has probably ever done. So, until Final Fantasy VII Remake is fully released, I can recommend it to people. I mean, I'd still recommend it to people. I would just be like, just heads up. It's not the full game. There is a cliffhanger. We're all waiting on this together. I still love how 10 fights gives you time to think about your moves. I, I totally agree, Ice. We were talking earlier about if, if you had a friend that came up to you, Ice, and said, I really want to play Final Fantasy. People seem to talk about it. People like it. Final Fantasy... Um... People are like really liking Final Fantasy. I want to play Final Fantasy. What's the first one you'd recommend? What would you recommend, Ice? We had some interesting combos a couple minutes ago about it. Does it end on a cliffhanger? I mean, it ends right outside of Midgar. You know? Start with 10. Best of both worlds between the old and new games. I'm sure Remake will be good, but for a first game in the series, I don't want people to... Make people crush from losing Jesse. Aha. Crushed. Good pun there, son. <laughs> oh, man. 
Jesse was awesome. I love the development they did. I love the development they did with all of the Avalanche characters. They did such a good job with Jesse and Biggs and Wedge and unintended, but well noted. Your thoughts on where to start? I absolutely agree with you, Ice. I would definitely recommend 10. Seven for the basics. I think seven, I think seven is a really great one. I would definitely just say, I think 10 is that perfect middle ground between old Final Fantasy and new Final Fantasy. You know, it has the world, it has, you know, the the characters, the story, the music, I, they all have that. But it just feels like that culmination of, of just modern Final Fantasy mixed with the battle system of the old. So, and it's cool because like you can start 10 and if you love the battle system, play nine and below. If you love the world and the voice acting and all of that, and you want more action-y, then move on to 12 and above, you know? So I think 10 is a great place to kind of gauge your interest in the gameplay, if you want more turn-based or more action. And I think it's a great, it's just an overall phenomenal game. So I thousand percent agree with you, Ice. Semantics, if you've never played Final Fantasy before, they're all old. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, fair enough, very true. Although, if you ever, if you ever go into Final Fantasy's official Discord page, they actually separate Final Fantasy one through nine as old Final Fantasy, and ten and above, they have a whole separate section for it, and they title that as new or modern Final Fantasy. So Square Enix themselves on their Discord really do separate them. Yeah. Yeah, really. If you go on Final Fantasy's Discord, 1 through 9 are old Final Fantasy, and then 10 and newer are modern Final Fantasy. I'm sure it's probably something with, like, the voice acting, or maybe, like, I don't know. But I, I thought that was really interesting that they themselves separated, like, separated the two of them. Wonder how 10 sneaked into the new one? I mean, if you look at 9 and then go to 10, I feel like that is... A huge jump in the in the you know graphical differences the world the 3d maps the the camera the voice acting I I mean I see I see that the visual yep visual updates from 9 to 10 the world map as well there's not really a world map in in 10 and above as there is in like 9 and below I mean I guess you could even argue a third middle portion there of like seven eight and nine like six and below is old final fantasy seven eight and nine is like middle final fantasy and then ten and above is modern but yeah nine was cutesy you gotta combine both eight and nine in my opinion for a fair comparison yeah i think it, it's it's so baffling to me seeing the visual differences between final fantasy 7 on the ps1 versus eight and nine also on the ps1 it's 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 yeah and they're all in the same hardware it's just crazy like the, the visual differences i mean some character characters in seven look like lego blocks and then characters in eight and nine look like actual human body proportions so it's very interesting very interesting but there's like a year between nine and ten there is that's what's crazy yeah, this came out in 2000, and then 10 came out in 2001, I believe. I would classify 1 through 6 as old, 7 through 9 as classic, and 10 plus new. It's good terminology for it. Let's see. That was very good terminology for it. Final Fantasy VII Remake is old, confirmed. I mean, it's based on an old game, you know. But, yeah, I thought that was really interesting when I went into their Discord and saw that was originally designed to be a side game. Really? Really? I didn't know that. And to think they can make that jump between 7 and to 9 within a year. Right? I'm. It's so crazy to me that at one point between 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, between those five games, those five games all came out within a seven-year period. Think about that. Five Final Fantasy games in seven years. That's just unthinkable at this point in time that that would ever be a possibility, you know? Like, think about that. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. 
all in a seven year time span. Five games in seven years, that's the dream. Xenogears was a contender for seven, I didn't know that. I know they were kind of thinking of doing seven more in like a Parasite Eve kind of style, but I didn't know that. I think they can make that jump between seven to nine within a year. And then got the full number treatment. Yeah, it's 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 kind of I mean, even if you think about eight, nine, and ten, just those games, the difference between eight and ninety-nine and ten in two thousand one, that's a two-year difference. And those games are worlds apart in terms of graphics and gameplay and and lighting and textures and mapping and graphics, like it's super interesting. Super, super interesting. We only have had two single-player main titles in over a decade, though there were 13-2 and Lightning Returns. You know, I wonder if the teams that worked on 13-2 and Lightning Returns, like, if they just were not into sequels, they probably could have had an additional... If they had combined the time for 13-2 and Lightning Returns into one single game, I don't know. They probably could have got another one out, you know? And it's weird, like like Final Fantasy pretty much pretty much when Sakaguchi was part of the company, it didn't seem like sequels were that big of a thing, you know? So it seems give me Final Fantasy 16, same. I am craving a new Final Fantasy. I hope it's I hope it's fantasy-ish. Like, I really hope they go into something like Final Fantasy IX. Or Final Fantasy like five, like that really fantasy kind of world. Because 15 was pretty modern. 13 was very futuristic. 12 was I don't even know. I don't even know. Like what even was 12? 12 is a 12 is just evil East. <laughs> 12 is pretty much just evil East. I mean 10 is kind of fantasy, but in its own I don't know. I would just love like a Final Fantasy 9 kind of Final Fantasy 16, you know? Was steampunk-esque? Yeah. It's probably a good word for it. Hope it is turn-based and does for the new games what 9 did for the PS1 era games. I hope so too, man. I hope so too. I, I, I'm I really surprised we didn't get anything from Final Fantasy for the PS5 reveal, honestly. I was really expecting at least a, a hint of Remake Part 2 somewhere, a teaser trailer, or a teaser trailer for 16, I was a little... Man, to be honest, I, like, we didn't get anything Final Fantasy, we didn't get anything God of War 5. I was a little bummed. You don't think sinkles were that much of a thing? Uh, I mean, like, 9 and below, they didn't really do, like, 9-2 or, or, like, a sequel to 8. It's almost like the team's focused on telling the story, and then they completed it, they were happy with it, and then they moved on, you know? And I really appreciate that. Like, there's something about just finishing a project, being content with it. You know, maybe it's not as perfect as you want it to be. It's never as perfect as you want it to be. But just giving it the best you can and then being like, okay, this is Final Fantasy IX. We're releasing it. We're happy with it. On to Final Fantasy X, you know? There's something about just artists and and developers and stuff that do that instead of like trying to keep adding and adding and adding and adding to the story and sometimes adding to story can have like really good story and i'm not knocking anything against that but like i don't know i just i like that they were so focused on like new games you know yeah very true well seven that started that trend in my opinion absolutely Dirge of Cerberus, yeah, I mean, and 10 2. I think 10 2 came out before any of that. 10 2 was like the first sequel, sequel they had ever tried. And then, and then after 10 2, they like dove real deep into Final Fantasy 7 compilation. All of us who play Final Fantasy were hyped to see Square Enix and then laugh out loud. I don't know if any of you saw Maximilian Dude's reaction to it, but it was awesome what he did. He was, I saw his reaction to it. He's all watching it. And then the Square Enix, like, Project Ethereum or whatever comes on, and he sees it. And uh, it says, like, Square Enix, like, coming out 22. I don't I don't think they had a, a date for it. But he's like, yep, that's never coming out. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, man, that's the most true statement of a Square Enix title. And I say that with 
absolute love. But Square Enix just has a really bad habit of, uh... Yeah, they just have a bad habit of taking... They take a while on their games, shall we say. Sometimes faults of their own, sometimes not faults of their own, but... Yeah, yeah. True with 10 too. I agree. All right, my friends. So I think what we're going to do, I think we're going to wrap it up here for the day. Um, I think we're going to call it for today for the stream. A little bit shorter of a stream. I do got a lot of stuff I'm going to do. I'm trying to finish my PS5 reaction video and like editing and everything for it. So I'll try to upload that as soon as possible to my YouTube channel. But as always, I just want to give a big thank you to each one of you. Thank you all so much for always taking time out of your day to come hang out with me. Like, I appreciate you all immensely and just always make my day better. So I'm super, super happy to have all of you. They did push out nine main numbered games, but didn't get sequels themselves. Sure, but there was a push for Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, and CT got a sequel. We got a Chocobo Dungeon 2, a sequel for a side game. And 5 has an anime sequel. Very interesting. Make good points. Make really good points, son. Have a great day at work, mate. Thanks for the absolutely amazing stream. Thank you, Steve-O. Thank you. Have a great day, man. <laughs> you make mornings awesome. I appreciate the hell. I appreciate the hell out of all of you. Thank you all so much. Before, before we end, though, of course, you all down to do a raid? There's one of my... Take care. I thank you all. I really appreciate it. Are you all down to do a raid, though, and go raid someone else and give them some Final Fantasy love? Steve-O busting out the raid sign. I love it. Let's go. Every time I see let's go, I always think of Maximilian Dude's like intro though. Let's go. I love it. All right. Let's go. I want to go raid my buddy. Uh, his name's The Shine. He's playing Final Fantasy VI right now. And this dude is super, super cool, super positive, super fun guy to hang out with. Um, so definitely give him a follow if you haven't already. Let him know that Zephyr sent you. I'll be back same time tomorrow, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And as always... Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. Have an awesome day. And it is raid time, my friends.